Banff National Park is one of the most beautiful locations on Earth and a photographer's paradise. In this video, I'll cover the most iconic locations for photography in Banff National Park, and they're all easy to get to. Let's begin in the town site of Banff and Surprise Corner. This location isn't much of a surprise anymore as it's visited by thousands a day, but it's a must see if you're in Banff. There's a very small parking lot that is only empty early in the morning or late at night. Once you arrive, there are stairs leading to a generous platform where you can take your photo of the amazing Banff Springs Hotel. Beneath the Banff Springs Hotel is yet another popular tourist place for photos, Bow Falls. The next location is Cascade Gardens. And if you haven't already heard of this location, you have probably seen photos taken from here. The property, which includes the well-known administration building and gardens, overlooks the town with the nearly 10,000 foot Cascade Mountain towering over Banff. Let's next go to Mount Norquay. To get there, you'll head north up Mount Norquay Road until you reach a stone retaining wall on your right. This area is called the Green Spot and is a grass sloped area that has great views summer or winter. A similar but perhaps better location for aerial photos is at Sulphur Mountain. Taking the Banff gondola up Sulphur Mountain is easy to do and will give you an unbelievable view of Banff and the surrounding valley. We now head to Vermilion Lakes, which is only a five minute drive from the town of Banff. Sunrise offers the best photos and the way the sun hits Mount Rundle gives the rock face a white and pink chalky look. Word of advice, bring your bug spray as I was eaten alive just a couple of weeks ago when I visited. To Jack Lake is our next stop. Less than 15 minutes from both Vermilion Lakes and Banff Townsite. I prefer sunrise here as the sun turns the top of Mount Rundle into different shades of burnt orange. But sunsets, of course, are spectacular too. A couple of weeks ago, the moon danced along the top of the mountain and gave me and my dad a pretty amazing show. Five-minute drive down the road from Two Jack Lake is Lake Minnewanka, Banff's largest lake. This lake offers boat rides and a different perspective of the mountain scenery. It's especially nice during the fall. We're now heading north on the Trans-Canada Highway and in less than 30 minutes from Banff, we'll reach Johnston Canyon. This area has small, easy hikes, and the highlights include the canyon setting, lush forests, a fast-flowing river, and beautiful waterfalls. As we continue north, we'll then come upon Castle Mountain. You won't miss this Goliath as it's clearly visible on the east side of the highway. There's a very large pull-off area and parking lot. The best photos are not taken from the parking lot, but are taken down at the river. The river can be accessed by passing through the wildlife gate on foot. So plan ahead so you can find this entrance. Morant's Curve is about 15 minutes north of Castle Mountain. This area gives the classic alpine view, complete with mountains, forest, and river, and a moving train if you get a little lucky. We now arrive in Lake Louise, and this is one of my favorites. Yes, it is overrun by tourists in the summer, so you have to arrive early. What I love about Lake Louise is that it affords the photographers so many different options. 
from the Milky Turquoise Lake, Victoria Glacier, the boathouse and canoes, the forests, and of course, the chateau. There are many hikes near or around Lake Louise, and perhaps the best is up to Lake Agnes. This is a relatively steep three and a half kilometer hike, but it is worth it. I mean, look at it. The tea house is open from early June to mid-October. Less than 20 minutes from Lake Louise is Moraine Lake, one of the most photographed lakes in the world. And for good reason. Moraine Lake is very popular and the parking lot is usually full by 5 a.m. during the summer months. The road to Moraine Lake is open from early June to mid-October. From Moraine Lake, we'll head north again, this time to Bow Lake. This might be the most underappreciated lake in Pamp National Park, but it's one of my favorites. Crowfoot Mountain, the Hanging Glacier, and the expanse of the Wapta Ice Field are all in plain view. Next on our photography tour is Pato Lake which is only about five minutes from Bow Lake. The infrastructure of the area has recently been upgraded and improvements made to the parking lot, walking path, Bow Summit, and the viewpoints. The turquoise color of the lake is unreal, and the unique shape of the lake, well, it looks like a wolf. Now, I have a couple more jewels that are just outside of Banff National Park, and the first is Abraham Lake. Abraham Lake is about one hour northeast of Pato Lake and is best in winter. Methane bubbles are visible under the ice and afford great leading lines to the surrounding mountains. And finally, the magnificent Emerald Lake located in Yoho National Park and about a 30 minute drive from Lake Louise. This is one of my favorite locations and in my opinion, best at sunrise or sunset when the lights are on at the lodge and the trees are sprinkled with snow. Well, there you go the top landscape photo spots in one of the world's greatest locations, Banff National Park. For more videos on Banff and travel, please subscribe.